everyone, my name is Danielle, and if you're new here, welcome to Board Game Bakes. This week we're covering Hickory Dickory, which is a new game by Plathow Games that comes out this month, so I figured it'd be the perfect time to share a bake. In the game, just like the nursery rhyme, Hickory Dickory Dock, there's a mouse running out the clock. So you play as a group of mice, and they're trying to complete a scavenger hunt for Lord Cuckoo. So all the mice have different jobs. You get to have one mice scurrying up the clock, and you have another other mice going around on the minute hand. So it's very thematic and it's fun because all the mice have different jobs and you have a lot of different things that you want to manage while you're doing it. So I know we've been doing a lot of gingerbread but I really I just couldn't resist because here's what the game board looks like. It's a huge cuckoo clock. So how can you not recreate it? I mean it's so beautiful. It's also huge. It's a really big clock. Really big. So when I wanted to recreate it I actually had to scale it down because that would be a lot of bathing. But we're going to make a 3D cuckoo clock out of gingerbread and some fondant. Let's get started. Okay, I have a problem. I keep going back to gingerbread because it's so fun to build structures that actually work and hold their form. I tell you, caramel is a game changer. If you're looking for a good gingerbread recipe, check out my father's work video. I'll put the link and that has me making it. So right now we're going to roll out our gingerbread dough to a quarter inch thickness. The structure is actually pretty simple. You need two large pentagons, three rectangles, the length of one cyber pentagon, and I think I mean about two inches wide, and two roof tiles that are slightly larger width and length than your side rectangles. Based on the size of your pentagon, also create a bird cookie and a circle cookie. I used my Cricut to get the ratios right, but you can also probably do it in paint. Try to have similar sized cookies baking on the same baking sheet. And you probably don't want anything besides your huge pentagons on one sheet. They may even need their own sheet if you make them too big. Bake for 9 to 13 minutes depending on the size of the cookies. After a minute or two of cooling, you can use a knife to cut out the sheet they used to originally trace the dough. And this way you have nice crisp edges. Unlike most cookies, you want to let these cool completely on the pan before moving it so they have a chance to harden. Take a batch of fondant and put the smallest amount of brown in it to give it an off-white color. Roll it out very thin and use it to cover your bird and your clock face. Now take two chunks and form them into the hands of the clock. Use the circle you cut out before as reference this way for the right size. Roll it out again. You want it to be a little thicker than what you put on the clock. Probably closer to a quarter inch thick and cut out 12 small circles. Use your fingers or a ball tool to create a petal shape. While that hardens, let's make some leaves. Roll out a deep red fondant to a quarter inch thickness. I cheated and used the only leaf cookie cutters I have. Technically, you could probably trace the leaves on the board and scale them down or print out a stencil, but that's a lot of points to cut out and that just sounds painful. Thus, I recommend using any leaf or a shape close to a leaf that you have to save you some time. Do a combination of smaller and larger leaves if possible. You could cut bits of the leaf apart to get different shape and size leaves. You could choose to angle them against a cookie sheet to dry, and this will give them some curve and kind of a lifelike shape. Use a light tan or orange color of edible paint to shade the bottom half of the petal and put numbers, suns, or moons on it to match the board. You can make edible paint by taking food color gel and adding a little bit of alcohol to thin it. The alcohol evaporates so the fondant doesn't get too soggy. Use some black edible paint to put some lines on your leaves in the center and up to the different points on the leaf. Now the easiest part! Take some red fondant and use your hands to form little balls that are the berries on the clock. Phew! Now that that's over, let's decorate the clock. Use a burnt orange color to put the numbers on the clock, put a ring around the clock, and add the little lines between each of the numbers. You could also add some fun swirls in the middle, but most of it will get covered by the clock hands anyway, so up to you. Speaking of which, use the same burnt orange color to paint the entire hands of the clock. If you have some gold luster powder, you can sprinkle it on to make them more shiny. Now let's bring our bird to life. Use a lighter burnt orange color to outline the bird shape and color the head, wings, and tail. Add a few dots of texture to the feathers around the bird's neck. Once it's dried, it's time to whip out some edible markers to bring our bird to life. Use the black edible marker to color the tips of the feathers and add some definition. Use it to add a beak and eyes and finally the crown, which can also be accented with a yellow edible marker. It's ready to go! While you're here, make sure you hit subscribe and help my little channel grow. Thanks! Let's put our clock together. 
or at least start the process. Use a cookie card to try and center where the clock face should go and outline it with edible marker. This can be your guide to arrange the 12 flower petals you created in the right order around the circle. You have to let it correspond with where they are on the actual board. Once you're happy with the setup, lather the tips that are painted with white royal icing and this will serve as our glue for the first part of construction. Place the clock on the top of the icing and gently press down to adhere it. Use your finger to scrape away any of the excess that oozed out. Now roll out some light green fondant and use the same cookie cutter that was used for the petals to cut out circles. You're going to need 12. Pinch one side of the circle to give it a leaf appearance and place one behind each of the 12 tan petals. Put a little royal icing on the back of each one so they stay in place. Now use bits of green to fill in between the green leaves with various patterns. Some have half circles facing different ways, other have lots of small bits. Follow your heart. Now just pick what time you want to be and glue your hands into place. Let all this dry for at least two hours so the royal icing hardens and it stays together. Before assembling your clock, take some dark brown edible paint and put roof tiles, as in little U's, on the roof pieces to help bring your image together. You could also take a bristly paintbrush and add lines to the side of your walls, I guess, so this way it looks more like wood. Once you've melted some granulated sugar in a saucepan to create a thin caramel, you can begin construction. Grab an extra pair of hands to stick your two large pentagons onto the bottom piece. Dip one of the short sides and both of the long sides of the wall pieces you created in the caramel and gently push it together and hold it in place while it solidifies. Repeat with the other side. Give this a few minutes to set up, this way it's nice and hard, and then it feels really wrong but you're gonna dip a whole part of the roof into the caramel and then adhere the roof piece. Let that set a little bit and do the same thing on the other side. As a final thing, use the caramel to stick the bird onto the roof of the house. We're closing in on the finish line. Take some dark green fondant, rip off bits of it to make leaves, and roll some out with your hands to create vines. Use roll icing to stick the vines onto the clock, then the green leaves, and add a few of those berries we made. I know they are so hard. And then the last thing is the leaves. Two go behind your pretty bird, and they definitely help bring it together. Do your best to place the leaves around the clock, just like the game board, while realizing that gravity is working against you, especially when you use royal icing. Ta-da! Or ding, ding, ding. Our clock gingerbread is complete. Thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Bakes. I love how this clock turned out, even if it may have been a little bit difficult to eat with all the caramel. It's also really fun having it be so tangible you gotta pick up and move it and it may have sat on my counter a few days because I wasn't really sure what to do with it. <laughs> have you tried Hickory Dickory? Or is it something you wanna check out? I'll put the link down below. Keep playing games and keep them sweet. Bye.